In this video, we're going to introduce the principle of virtual work and then develop an equation that we can use for calculating the deflection of trusses. So we begin by examining a, a simple truss structure. So in dark, let me just highlight it. So this truss structure here that I'm going over in blue is subjected to some real loads. I've called them P1, P2, and P3. As a result of applying these real loads, P1, P2, and P3, joint A in the structure has deflected by an amount delta. So it's, it's an amount delta in the direction shown. So it could have horizontal and vertical components, but I've shown it as in an arbitrary direction. As well as this deflection of joint A, if we examine one of the bars in this beam, so let's take this bar here, and we zoom into that bar, and now we can see that it has real dimensions. It will actually have an area of A. From, as a result of the real loads being applied, this bar A has had an extension in its length of DL. In the lower picture in the diagram, we have the same truss structure with exactly the same geometry, exactly the same boundary conditions. So pin supported on the left hand side, roller supported on the right hand side. But now it's now subject to a virtual load P dash. We choose, as this virtual load is completely arbitrary, we're choosing that this load P dash will have a unit magnitude. And as a result of this unit magnitude, the same bar that we examined before of length L will have an internal load U acting upon it. So this internal force we will use for calculating the internal work and likewise we will examine the external work. So the first thing we're going to do is examine the external work done on this structure as a result of the virtual load. So the virtual load has a magnitude of one and as a result of this virtual load, as a result of the real loads, the real structure has deflected by delta. However, this virtual load could be imagined to have been sat there all the time. So let's draw this on a graph. If while we were applying the real loads, the virtual load has a magnitude of one, was able to move along all the time until point A had a total deflection of delta. So the area under the graph is the external work done by the virtual load. So this is the loading function. The virtual work is always there. It doesn't grow gradually like we've seen in other situations going from zero up to the total magnitude. It was always there. It always had a magnitude of one and it traveled through the distance delta. So therefore what we can say that the external work done, so capital U, E for external, is equal to force times distance. The force was a unit load of one and it traveled through a distance of delta. In a similar manner, the virtual work applied also will do internal work. By applying this virtual work of one, we will have a, un a load U in each one of the trusses. And each one of these trusses will itself travel through DL. So we can say that the 
internal work the internal work done by the virtual load in one bar alone so you you I would be equal to the U for the given bar multiplied by the DL, the extension of the given bar. And again, the U is always present. And we can extend this for every single bar such that UI, the internal work done for the entire truss, is equal to the summation of U dot DL. And these could be for the individual bars, so you could give them a subscript if you liked. Uh, let's call it J, not to in, not to confuse with the I for internal. Okay, so we're going to gather from uh, internal work equals external work. So external work must be equal to internal work so conservation of energy so we have one dot delta and this was remember the deflection at the point a and the one was also in the direction of this deflection at a is equal to the summation of all of the forces in each of the bars in the structure multiplied by the extension of each of the bars in the structure. So we're going to have a look at this equation in a little bit more detail. So going back up to our diagrams that we presented, when we had real loads, so let's real loads, we got a deflection of delta at point A and we had extension of each bar DL. So if we go back to our equation delta here and DL are both from the real situation. When we imagined our situation where we're applying a unit load or a virtual load we had and a virtual internal force U and we had a virtual load at A in the direction of delta of 1. So using a different color. So this one is from the virtual situation and this internal force also arises from the virtual situation. So the loads are virtual, but the displacements are real. We're now going to recall from strength of materials that our deflection in an individual bar, DL, so deflection or extension of a single bar, DL is equal to NL divided by AE. So N would be the internal force in the bar, or the normal force in the bar. L is the length of the bar. A is the cross-sectional area, and E is the Young's modulus of the bar. And now we're, what we're going to do, just to make the equation neater, is we're going to give this virtual load we're going to give it the letter little n so this would be the real load but would give a dl and n is the virtual and we're going to substitute for dl onto the right hand side of the equation and we're going to rename u as n and this will finally get us an equation that one dot delta is equal to the summation of n n l divided by a e where the summation let's call it j that was 
happens over the number of bars in a given system. And to remind ourselves, N is the virtual force, capital N is the real force, L equals the length of a bar, A equals the area of a bar, and E is the Young's modulus. And we're going to show in the next video how we can apply this equation to solving the deflection of trusses. So it's worth highlighting this as a major equation in the notes.